أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم محمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام أشرف المرسلين سيدنا ومولانا محمد المصطفى صلى الله عليه وسلم بمددكم ونظركم سيدي الرسول الكريم يا حبيب العظيم وبسم الله الرحمن الرحيم أتي الله أتي الرسول وأولو الأمر منكم and I always remind her from myself and abduk la jisu ta'ifu miskin wa zalim wa jahal and by the grace of Allah that I'm still in existence. Took a path in which to be nothing and alhamdulillah that Allah granted a ni'mat, a tremendous gift to guide us toward the ways of tariqah which are the ropes that extend throughout creation from the holy heart of Sayyidina Muhammad In this Thursday interactive night it's through the specialty of tafakkur and contemplation, meditation. Every culture has a different explanation and tafakkur is deep in Islam that to contemplate Allah's holy words to contemplate the holy hadith and to live a life of contemplation taking an account of every action and to nourish the light of every good deed, the light that it produces within the heart. To nourish that light, focus on that light, how to exemplify that light is all through tafakkur. And a simple understanding tonight is instead of thinking of everything through Islamic terminology and being lost in a reality that you didn't reach to, think of energy. I think in school they teach you to bring it to the easiest multiplier. Big complicated fractions are very difficult to compute. So bring it down to the smallest and easiest multiplier which is energy. If you think of everything in terms of energy then you understand how to build it, how to leave the bad energy, build the good energy and defend ourselves against any type of attack of energy. If we think in terms of energy then we'll begin to understand every reality and everything that we're doing. Because of Islam people think they pray, they covered everything. They gave zakat, they, ca they covered everything. Means they do the usul and think it's everything and then I got sick. Or I'm suffering from slight mental illness or I'm suffering from whatever I'm suffering from. And it's no, come back to the, the easiest multiplier is energy. Is look at what you're doing in life, are you producing positive energy or negative energy? Are you doing excessively positive deeds every day, every morning from the time you wake up to the time you go to sleep, you make a hisab for that day and accounting for that day, was that a good day, excess positive or excess negative? And within a week of your accounting you'll realize that you're producing positive energy or you're producing negative energy. And what is it that you do to get rid of your negative energy? And then that becomes an understanding for us. Then when we understand that and we understand how we spend the day and all the actions of the day we'll understand why we're sick, why our income is dropping, why all these actions are happening, why every type of difficulty. It explains itself, then they understand and they, they need guidance at that point. The other shaykh, how can I make a excess energy? How can I make my energy to be more positive through the day? How do I wash away the difficult energies and the difficult energies that face me throughout the day? And we were talking today with Abu Ibrahim, if I can see him on this side shaykh, I can focus on his face. You come more that way, so I can see you. Yeah, you can sit, sit there so I can see you. I, I need to focus on someone's face. I've seen Zishan's face all day. <laughs> that this world of energy and the world of medicine and healing, their lives 
or to find a problem, give you a medication based on what their physical eye sees. Spiritual healing comes to teach, no there must be an internal cause for external reaction. For you to be externally showing signs of something wrong, internally something must be operating incorrectly. Then they begin to teach how to focus on your energy, how to focus on what are you doing all day long to build your energy. Means by your, your zikr, your salah, your, your good deeds, good actions, the awrads that you have, they're not comparable in the power of what you have to gain. Don't just say, I, I made my salah and everything is great, no, no. The power that zikrullah has, the power that salawat Nabi has, the power of those energies is something not comparable. Nothing that can be imagined that when you sit and mention Allah's holy name what type of energies are coming onto the soul. So then do you spend time in which at fajr time or asr time if you're working very busy you come home from asr to maghrib and just sit and start to make your zikr. Start to do an awrad, a daily wazifa, a daily uh, mantra that the shaykhs have and each tariqah has their own. We have it on the app, you go to the app, you look for the awrad and you do that on a daily basis brings tremendous energy. You make the salawats on Sayyidina Muhammad throughout the day, you make the zikr of Allah brings energy. Then when you're building positive energy they begin to teach you, preserve now your energy that you have. Because it's like you're running water through your house but every fountain is leaking. And Mawlana Shaykh would teach that the big leak is not the danger. A big hole in the wall it's obvious you saw the hole you fixed it. You know when you destroy your home as if there's a small leak and you didn't detect it. And it just drips and drips and drips and before you know it, it destroys everything. So it's the small cracks that are destroying everything. It's not the big and obvious problem, hopefully people have an aql to understand something is, is greatly wrong in that action and you try to stop it. Every positive energy you're bringing on as an example, ten good points, ten hasanat and then you look throughout the day that the incorrect actions or dropping them, dropping them, dropping them. Some people are actually basically flatline at that day or they start to go negative because the good deeds weren't enough to bring their positive energy up. So then they look at all of their actions and then they'll be taught by the shaykhs, preserve your energy. Means there's a power within wudu, there's the holiness of the sunnah of Prophet that when you are washing and keeping a state of wudu at all times. It's not only for salah, it's for every worshipness and every moment is a worshipness of Allah Every interaction with another human being is worshipness. Everything you do is a worshipness. If you interact good it's praying, Allah's thankful. If you interact bad you'll be punished. Means everything that we are doing is an interaction, you keep a state of wudu, you wash. You're all washed, you come up, pray two rakah salat al wudu. Even if you're on a chair and then you pray two, salat, two rakah salat al wudu and seal yourself and say, Ya Rabbi, seal my energy. Then they understand how to seal their energy. One is to build it, two is to seal it, and then to understand how you're losing it. Anyone who interacts with human beings on a large scale, means you drive a cab, you're, you're a nurse, you're a doctor, you work in a mall, you, you, you interact with human beings, they are the most powerful energy beings God has created. وَلَكَ الْكَرَامْنَ بَنِي adam. We have honoured the children Bani, Bani Adam and the children of Bani Adam means that they have a tremendous energy. How much of that energy are they giving out? How much energy are they bringing in? And the people that we deal with, how much energy are they throwing upon us? If you're excess positive and you're building yourself and, and making yourself to be like a light bulb shining, everywhere you go you're going to pick up the burdens of people. Means their energy and negative energy is going to come on to you. So that's why then they have to teach. 
If you're building yourself, trying to make yourself to be positive and you don't want to take everybody's negative energy because this energy explains that, Shaykh why I'm having problems in my life, Shaykh why when I come home from work I'm like this, Shaykh why is like this, why is like that because you're thinking in a, in a whole different plane of why things are happening and they teach you the most basic, come back down to the energy. Are you building your energy and doing positive things? Are you interacting a lot with people and their burdens coming on to you? Especially if you're trying to help everybody, you'll be sick from everybody. What are your interactions with people? How are you defending yourself? Then they begin to teach you, keep your wudu, keep all your practices, keep every wazifa and order that you're doing. When you come home completely shower to take away that difficulty because people are throwing their burdens onto you and it's not by intention, some can intentionally send their energy. But this is not that talk tonight, this is the unintentional cross-firing of difficulty and zulamat. A, a zulamat, a negativity that wasn't meant for you but is like ricocheting towards your direction. And that's why the Sunnah of Prophet is the majestic might and armour for the heavenly kingdom. If you understand the nobility of Prophet which we're all trying to move towards the understanding, nobody has a complete knowledge of that great reality. But he's teaching the nights of the heavens that when you wash and you use the holiness of water, the angelic power of that water is activated by your intention. The Ya Rabbi I'm intending to wash, to take away the burdens and to be from those whom are pure and clean. Immediately the angels are activated within that water because Allah said, My throne is upon the Mai, my Izzat is upon this Mai. This reality of Meem and Alif that the Muhammadan reality and the Izza of Allah is a secret locked within this H2O. has a hu and a wow for wudu, it has a deep secret in that water. And as soon as you make intention for wudu, the angelic power of that water is now activated. If we had eyes to see, we would see that water like a water from paradise. And immediately you're washing, every type of negativity is burned away, every type of shaitan and, and creature that trying to cling to insan. Like a boat that been under water for too long, it has everything that clinging to it and, and dressing upon it, the wudu begins to wash it and wash it and wash it. Then they teach the wudu of the blood, how to make your zikr, how are you washing only your body but shaitan is inside of you. Why is it that you don't do your zikr, don't do your breathing, don't do your practices? So that you can build the energy that begins to, sh to chase the shaitan inside of you. The shaitan is already inside of you, he's very happy that you only wash the outside, you forgot him inside. But then the zikr and the zikr into the heart immediately begin to activate an energy within the blood, the blood becomes heated. Those whom are skilled in their practices they are heated people, their hands, their necks, their bodies heat up in zikr. Because they're like a fire inside of this Divine Light and shaitan is running from their light. So it means they're, they're washing inside, they're washing outside. And the energy begins to explain, every time we have a difficulty go back to the thinking of energy. That this difficulty, this sickness, this thing that's happening, why? What am I doing for positive energy? How am I defending myself against the negative energy, inshaAllah? Bi hurmati Muhammad al Mustafa wa bi siri Surat al Fatiha. Welcome to Muhammadan Way YouTube channel, your premier destination for videos on Sufi spirituality, classical Islamic teachings, and realities of the soul. With a library of over a thousand videos and new titles uploaded weekly. Join us to discover true meaning and inner peace in our often troubled world. Click the link now to subscribe.